Welcome to my video for creating a parent-child list relationship for a document library in SharePoint. Um, if you've seen my previous posts and videos on the subject, we've previously created a parent list child relationship for a SharePoint list, but those solutions did not work for a document library. So here we're going to make uh, that solution work for a document library. If you want to know why it didn't work for a document library and what exactly we did in those previous posts, be sure to check out uh, the blog URL in the description of this video. Uh, that blog will also have the scripts that we're using in this video so you can get those scripts if you want to use them for your own. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a parent list, which is going to be our issue list, and then a couple of child lists, which we have as a time list, so you can enter time for an issue. Um, if you look at that time list, you'll see that it has an issue, issue field, which is a look up back to the issue list, and the same for our document library called issue documents. If you go to that document settings, you see that we have a look up back to the issue list as well. So both the time entries and the documents will hold time entries for a specific issue and a document for a specific issue. And what we want to do is when you view an issue, we want you to be able to see all the time entries and all the documents for a specific issue as well as let you from the same screen add new time entries and add new documents and have them automatically associated with this issue so you don't have to manually select that drop down for the issue for the particular issue you're looking at. So let's go ahead and get started and what we do is we want to edit our default display form for our issue so that when we look at an issue we see all the time entries and all of the documents for that issue. So let's edit the default form for the display. We want to add a web part and we're going to add a time web part so we can see the list of time entries. Let's go ahead and drag that below here the issue. Now let's add another web part. This one is for the issue documents. And we'll also drag that below time. Alright, so here we have when you look at the default display form, you have uh, the, def the display form, you have a list of time entries and a list of documents. Now the next thing we need to do though is edit that default display form again because we want it to only show the time entries and the documents for this specific issue. And we do that with what's called web part connections. So to get to that we say let's go to our issue here. We want to go to the connections, provide row to the time list. And here we're saying I only want to show the time entries that have an issue field that matches the issues ID. And now that connection set up. Now we want to do the same connection for our document library. We want to do it for the ID from the issue and the issue field from the document library. And that's all there is to it. So now when you're looking at this, you're actually only seeing the time entries and the documents for this specific issue. To test that, uh, let's go ahead and add a new item for time. We'll call this entry one, five hours, but you see we have to manually select our issue. It's not set for us. So we have to manually say um, not enough hours in the day. And when we save it, sure enough we see it show up for the issue. And just so you know it actually works, if we go to the weekends are too short, th that time entry does not show up there. But what we want to do is when you click on add a new item, we want this drop down list to be automatically set for us uh, and also set to where the users can't change it so they don't change it to something incorrect. Likewise, uh, and what we didn't do in the previous post is when you add a new document and we say that document, we also want this drop down automatically set for us so the users don't mess that up and put the wrong value in. And we want to make sure they, don't, they can't change that value as well. All right, so that's the gist of what we're going to be doing with the, the scripts um, in this solution. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to add a script to our default display form for our issue. And that script, which again you can get from the blog post, is this script right here. And if you look at it, what we're doing, delete that little debug message for you, um, we're going to be getting the issue's ID from the query string. Whenever you go to a display form or an edit form, for a SharePoint list item, the ID of that item is passed in a query string variable called ID. And we want to get that ID out so we can use it. Uh, we then take that ID and we're going to create a cookie 
called issue ID. And here you, we have our helper function to create the cookie for us. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a cookie that expires in five minutes. And by creating a cookie, our child forms can read that cookie and get the ID for their parent and set their uh, list fields appropriately. So let's go ahead and we want to again edit our default display form for our parent issue and we're going to add a web part. We're going to add media and content, content editor, and click on add. And we want to edit the web part and now we're going to link to our script which happens to be in my site assets library and is called dispissue.js. Let's go ahead and change the appearance to hidden. We don't need it. Let's apply that. Click OK. And stop editing. So even though you don't see anything happen, when you click on the display form now, uh, there is a cookie being set to the ID of this specific issue. Now that that cookie is being set, we need to go to the new form for our time entry list and tell it, hey, you need to read that cookie and set your form field accordingly. So let's go to our time list and let's edit the default new form. And to this page, we're going to be adding a, another script. And here's what that script looks like. So if you look at this script, after the page loads, we're going to be getting we're we'll looking for that cookie issue ID, that cookie we set before. And if we find that issue ID, we're going to set our drop down list of issue to the correct uh, to the correct value. So that the user so that's set for the user, they don't have to choose it from the list. Also in our function to set that lookup value, we're going to disable that select so that they can't choose other options. They can only choose the current issue. So that's going to stop them from making mistakes. We've also got a piece of code here uh, for SharePoint's feature, uh, at least in SharePoint 2007 and 2010, that when you have a lookup list go over 20 items, it changes that select to an input field. So this little chunk of code checks to see, well, if it didn't find a select, is there an input field? And if there's an input field, then let's use that instead. Uh, this is not an issue in 2013 because it appears that in 2013 it's always a select box. So you don't need this chunk of code right here if you're using SharePoint 2013. Okay? So that's all it's doing. It's reading the cookie and then it's setting the drop down list to that value and then it's disabling it so that people can't make stupid selections. So here we are editing our default new form for the time uh, for the time new form. We're going to add a web part. So again, going to be media and content, content editor. Let's get that added edit the web part and again our script is in our site assets library and I believe it was called child issue or is it issue child issue child.js and again we're going to hide it because we don't need it let's apply it and stop editing so now when we go back to our issue we click on our issue. I hated the way season three of Downton Abbey ended. Didn't everybody? And we go to click a new time entry. You see that that issue is already set for us. We no longer have to set it. And we can't choose the other options. They're disabled. Why oh why? And save that. And you can see that new entry gets created for us. So now we need to do, this, do the same thing to our document library, which ends up being the exact same process. We go to our document library, we edit the default edit form for the document library, add a web part, media and content, content editor, add it. Let's edit the web part again. It's in our site assets, and it was issue uh, issue child dot j <sighs> edit web parts issue child dot js we're going to make it hidden we'll apply that as well and stop editing so as everything worked correctly and we go back to our issues 
weekends are too short and we go to add a new document we browse to the file because we have this dialog first add our file and we see that the issue is automatically set for us again weekends are too short we no longer have to set that manually and we can't choose anything else so now we've got the ability to add documents and list items uh, and automatically have that lookup field set for us. Uh, you could also use these cookies to pass additional fields. You don't just have to pass the ID of your, um, of your parent. You could pass other fields if you want to. Um, if you follow the whole blog post that I wrote on this, I referenced a couple of other links on how you can read and set SharePoint form fields. So you could use that if you want to uh, read more information or set other fields and not just this lookup field. But uh, there you go. If you have any problems, let me know. Uh, again, this solution seems to work great in 2007, 2010, 2013, and Office 365. So uh, good luck to you, and thanks for stopping by.